With the side of a round brush, we're going to put the water in using cobalt blue. I want it light in the distance. Everyone wants a lovely point on a brush. Why? I never use the point of a brush. If I use the point of a brush, I'd get a very thin line. I use the side of a brush. So I'm just putting a hint of water in here. Then we're going to create some reflections. Don't forget all your brush strokes must be level because water's always level. Bit more blue there, bit more blue there, bit of blue there, bit of blue there. Right, now what we're going to do is to use a three quarter flat and we're going to drag some colour down to get the reflections. The brush has to be held nearly flat to the paper so we're just going to twitch it down like that, look. Starting with light greens, dark greens. Just pretend you're stroking the pussycat. Just wipe it down like that, very easily. Now there's some depth in those trees, some darker colour. So we'll put that in now, just put some darker bits like that, look. Just a bit of Payne's Rain sap green. Bit there like that, bit there. Dark in the middle like that. I'm going to use a bit of Payne's Grey. And while I've got this brush in my hand, I shall just give more definition to the, the bank there. Every brush you've got you can use in so many different ways. Yeah, I want it darker. Just quick twitches. Now, a bit, bit dark here. What do they say? Twitching time saves nine. Something like that, isn't it? Only joking. Now. Rinse the brush. I'm just going to take that across and spread that across like that. A bit of dark here like that. I want a little bit of white now. This is acrylic white. And I'm going to just put odd bits of white like this look. Just breaks it up. A few wind lines in the water. <whistles> Keep your lines straight. A few wind lines in the water. Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to put in the rocks. But we must dry the water first. So let's have some rocks in now, using a three quarter flat. All we do is we just twist our wrist like that to get the shape of a rock. So let's put some in there, look like that. I can use a full width of the brush when I want a large rock. I can use the side of the brush or the corner of the brush when I want smaller rocks. We'll do a few at a time. One down here, and there's one next to it. With the wonder knife now, we just move paint and create the rocks. Very quick way. We'll need to put the highlights on later. Now with the surplus paint, I'm just taking it across like that. A few more rocks to go. Some on the left hand side. There's one here. A larger one here, a few little ones down here. Bit of purple now, Payne's grey and it is in crimson. And using the knife, put some light bits on the top. Now what I'm going to do is to show you how to turn these into proper looking rocks. 
I'll do two or three and you'll see the technique. Payne's grey, burnt sienna. Put some depth in there, look. Do a few here, look, in the water. Just to give them a three dimensional feel. So we'll do a few like that for you to see. And then I'll mix a bit of white with a bit of raw sienna. And we'll put some highlights on the top. Like that. There'll be some shadow underneath the rocks. Otherwise the rocks look as if they're floating on top of the water. Just have a wiggle like that. Bit of darker colour. And that's how the rocks are done. So what I'm going to do is to continue doing the rest of the rocks. So there's the rocks completed. What we need to do now is to bring the painting together. So I'm going to look at the whole painting and go around and add a few interesting strokes here and there. So I'm starting with the trees. I want some depth in those trees. So I'm using the large rigger and I want some Liz and Crimson, Payne's Grey, get a nice shadow colour and I'm just going to dab some paint on, look, dab a dab a do, dab a dab a do like that. And I'm going to push the paint around like that, get some depth in the trees. Don't be frightened of it. You can always over paint. So we'll just put a bit of shadow in there because I want to get the depth in the trees. I want some shadow underneath them trees, look, so a few quick strokes like that down there. Always link your trees, your buildings, your rocks and that to the ground. Same here, we'll put a bit of shadow in there, look, a bit of depth. So these little bits that make all the difference in a painting. Something I take a lot of time with, but I don't have a lot of time here, so I'm going to just dab it on, look, to show you the technique. Push the paint around. Bit of shadow, quick strokes like that, link it to the ground. That's a bit too dark. All you do, look, is play the violin. Always got tissue in your hand and take it out and go again. You want to relax when you're painting, you don't want to be stressed. I'm linking those shadows. Look, I'm not just drawing a line. I'm linking them into the foliage. Same on the other side, look, I need some depth in here. Just have a wiggle, bit of depth in there like that. And I want some strokes down here, because that line there is far too straight. So I'm just bringing bits down like that, look. I need a bit of blue and white over here. I'm not happy with the distant trees. Just dabbing that on like that. And we'll push that around again. I'm going to use a large brush. I'm going to warm this grass up by using a little bit of cadmium yellow and a bit of raw sienna. And I'm just going to go like that, look, and warm that grass up. Same over here. Bit of that lemon yellow. Bit of darker colour down here in the foreground that takes the eye into the distance. I'm going back to the rigger brush with some pins green and some red, and I'm going to work around this edge here. Just doing a dot dash up here, look, somebody will get the message. A little bit of blue, take a line across there where that's too bright blue. Not to worry, I've got this in my hand. You can always adapt, take it out. But I want a little hint of blue in the water, look. Always have a bit of tissue in your hand. And you can always remove any bit of paint you put on. And then we need to dry it. Now, I'm going to show you something interesting in a minute. But what I need to do just put a couple of fence posts in here, look. We'll have one there, just to make it interesting. 
And we'll have one here. A little bit of white, a bit of raw sienna. Soften it. Bit of structure in the tree, a bit of white. So all these little things that make the difference to your painting. I'm resting my hand on the paper look and I'm just twitching. Just a few little bits like that of structure. Just gives sparkle to your painting. Creates interest. Same over this side. I'm not happy with that, it's too dark. So I'm going to show you how you lighten it. You've got to learn how to correct the painting if you're not happy with it. So I'm going to use my angled tree brush with clean water. And I'm going to just scrub like that look. I'm going to take that out and that lightens it. We'll just do that on there, look, we'll scrub it there, look. And we'll just play the violin and that lightens the colour. People say you can't alter watercolours, good heavens. It's been half my life doing it. Now what do I need coming down there? I need a fence, don't I? The distance between the fence posts wants to be twice the height of the fence. We don't want square fences. So down here we're going to have a little fence. So simple, but it makes such a difference. Simple two bars. I used to be a chief draftsman. It took me years to get out of doing fences all three and four bar and very straight upright posts, not in a painting. Little fence like that makes works wonders. I'm just going to emphasize that again and then we'll call it finished. This is the kind of thing I do when I go out painting. I take my digital camera, I do quick scratches like this, and when I get home I've got plenty of time in my studio to turn this into a, a really nice painting. It'll take me maybe two or three hours. I'm just going around there again, picking out a bit of the water's edge. Not a lot. Very important. I'm going to do a dud dash down here, look. Add a bit of something in that grass. Do a dash up there. And there we are, we'll call it a day. Let's look at what we've done. We painted the sky first, wet in wet. Before we put the trees in, we have to dry the sky, otherwise the trees would have just gone into the wet paint and you've just got a blob of paint. We don't want that. You must dry between each level of painting. That's important. The trees go in next. I did the trees dark because trees are dark on the inside and light on the outside. Then I put the light foliage on. The land went in next. The water always goes in last in a painting. So you've got to be careful with your water. You can spend two or three hours on a painting and ruin it if you get your water wrong. So practice on a bit of paper first before you put your water in your painting. I put some rocks in. I've decided a few posts would give a bit of emphasis to the painting. And to balance the two on that side, I put a little fence coming down to the river's edge. It's as easy as that. Do try this painting, it's a pleasant painting to do, it's not too difficult, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Happy painting and good luck. now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The DVD of today's workshop is now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.